How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I want to show you how to mount some vinyl blinds on the window behind me. Now we'll be using what's called outside mount and if you don't know what that means, no problem. We'll walk through everything and this video is with the beginner in mind so we'll cover all aspects of the project. Now if you have some experience and you only want to look at a specific part of the install or the selection process, the video will have three different sections or what YouTube calls chapters. In the first chapter, we'll go over measuring and selecting your blinds, specifically for this outside mount application, but we'll touch on inside mount as well, because that is, at least for me, the preferred way to install if I can, but I can't in this one. Chapter two will focus on the actual install, and I'll show you a few different tricks which will make the project go smoother and overall just a faster project. And then the final chapter, chapter three, which I've gotten questions associated to this in some of my other blind videos, which focus on inside mounting, which you can see those links in the description, is how to shorten the blinds. So most blinds, like the one I have here, which is just a one inch vinyl blind, I got these at Lowe's, uh, Project Source is the Lowe's generic brand. You'll see on the shelf, you're only going to be able to usually get 72 inch long and 64 inch long. But the window behind me really only needs about 40 inches to cover the complete window. So how do you shorten that up and make the blind a little bit more fit to the window? Which is not that hard, but it is nice to see it done for the first time so you can just speed through that. So those are the three different chapters of this video and let's jump in and go over the measurement and selection of your blinds in chapter one. So before we get the measurement for our outside mount, let's just talk about the difference between inside and outside mount to make sure you're on the right video. So inside mount is preferred and it's a cleaner look. And what that would be is if your frame had thickness enough to mount the blinds within that frame. So it's pretty much flush with your outside trim and wall surface. That's preferred. If you can do that, go with that method. So you just measure your, your overall frame before you hit the window, and you're gonna need at least the width of the blinds that you're putting in. If you're doing one inch vinyl blinds, you probably need about one and a half inches. If you're doing two and a half inch faux wood blinds, you're gonna need at least about three inches. Here, this window frame has basically nothing, so I have no choice but to go outside mount. If you have the room, go inside mount, and you can check out this video right here that will show you how to install two and a half inch faux wood blinds from Home Depot, which are a pretty good product. So now that we know you're outside mounting, let's talk about how to get our measurements and where to mount. So you can check your trim surface overall. If it's a very decorative trim surface and you're having a hard time finding a flat surface to mount the bracket to, you're probably gonna have to mount on the wall above the trim. So you need to know that this is flat. This is a flat trim. It is angled in slightly towards the window, which I don't love, but it's still gonna provide me a flat surface where I can install these one inch vinyl blinds. So I'll be going to the trim itself but make sure you understand if you're going to the wall above the trim or if you're going to the trim surface. If you're doing wall mount, don't forget, you're not gonna go right to the wall. The ideal mounting would be to actually space out the bracket so you have no problem clipping in the head rail and also the blind will hang straight down without interfering with the top of the trim. So you can either make the spacer or you can buy them. And I'll put a link in the description to some universal clear spacers that might work for you. But you need to know how thick. Just take the thickness of the trim. Here it'd be three quarters of an inch. Now length is pretty easy for this one. Like I said before, 72 inches long and 64 inches long are pretty much the default blinds that you'll see at your home improvement store. Although you can get blinds online, like down in the description, Amazon has pretty good selection, especially one inch vinyl blinds. You'll see a link to blinds that are comparable to the Lowe's project source ones that I'll be using this video. But overall, these I will be mounting to the top surface of the trim, so that's the top of the bracket. Now I'm gonna need about 40 inches. Now you do not need to measure left, center, and right in getting three measurements and taking the longest one. That's a little bit more for inside mount. Uh, it, that would be overkill for outside mount. You're not that accurate when you're going to outside mount. 
Then for the width of the blinds, I'm just going to measure from the window frame to window frame. And I have 36 and a half inches is what I need. Now with outside mount, you want some overhang. So if you were doing inside mount, you want a quarter inch clearance on each side. Outside mount is different. You actually want one inch or more overhang on each side to help keep that light out because it's gonna be hanging outside and there's more opportunity for light to pass through. So you need that overhang to reduce the light coming into the room. So for this instance, I need 38 and a half inches and that is why I selected the 39 inch vinyl blinds. Maybe it doesn't sound very intuitive and it is a bit confusing, but when you're going shopping for blinds and you select the width, the actual dimensions are gonna be half of an inch smaller. So when I select 39 inch wide blinds, I am actually getting 38 and a half, which fit my exact application. So that's how you select your blinds. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions, if, if anything wasn't clear. But now we'll progress to the chapter two or the segment section, and that is where I will start to mount these blinds to this trim surface. So here's what will come with your blinds. You have your three mounting brackets, your mounting screws. The only thing that I'm gonna change up is I am going to use SPAC screws. So these are number six size, one inch screw, which is ideal for replacing the screws that come with. I did a whole nother video with a link here that will go through why I use these, but it just makes for a much more secure hold and an easier install. So it's definitely worth the additional cost to get these screws. And then the thing I need to take into consideration is I need to look at my blinds and make sure I have them in the orientation for which they'll be mounted. And that's looking at the rotation mechanism over here, which will be facing out. And then when I position the brackets on my trim, I just want to make sure I'm hitting these open spaces because I prefer not to mount and clip them in around the additional hardware. So I will hit this open space on this edge open space on that edge, just backing away about an inch and a half away from the end of the headrail. And then for the middle bracket, I'm going to offset it here, and I just need to get that measurement. So from the edge, from the edge I would need to come in about 21 inches, and that's where I actually want to put my middle bracket. It'll be a little offset, but then it'll be avoiding any of the internals here. So I took those measurements and knowing I want to be an inch and a half in from the end of the head rail, and the end rail has an inch overlap, I just marked, made a mark a half inch in from my frame here, same with this side. And then I measured from this side to that center mounting point, which was actually 20 inches in from the frame because of that inch overhang. And I know I want it positioned 21 inches in from the edge of the head rail. So hopefully that's not too complex, but those are my three locations for the mounting brackets. So I am using an impact driver. Now this Makita impact driver, I'll give a link in the description of the exact one. It has multiple settings, so I can really back down the speed and make it at a slower speed. If you have an impact driver that does not have those multiple settings, that's probably not the right tool for the job, and it's not gonna let you adjust the speed or modulate the speed, where you won't overdrive the screw and possibly strip out the head of the screw, especially if you're using the standard mounting, or strip out the hole itself in your wood trim. Now why I'm using those SPACs is because I'm able to use a number one Robertson drive and then that will fit the screw on there and that screw will hold so I can do one-handed operation and the SPACs will bite in the trim much easier. This is not a commercial for SPACs, SPACs is not paying me, just trying to help you guys with your project and it makes mounting these brackets much, much easier. So I'm gonna go flush with the upper surface. If I didn't have that reference for each of these brackets, I'd need to take a little more time and mark the top of that bracket to make sure I get a level mount for the top head rail. But I have a nice reference at the top of the trim that I'm using.
Now with all three of the brackets in place, we'll go ahead and mount the head rail. Now I usually do extend out the blind a little bit before mounting. And then I will just catch that front lip of each of those brackets and then I'll go ahead and shift it over in place so I have the one inch overhang on each side. So on these, it can be a little bit tricky. So what I do is I apply pressure so it doesn't fall off these other two brackets, but then I'll really rotate and secure one bracket at a time, starting from one side and moving across. So I have the right one secured now. Center is secured. Now we'll go into the last one. Okay. Now these little clips can seem like they're holding tight, but sometimes they're not. So just do a double check and make sure they're fully attached to that bottom channel. But this one is good and fully secure. Now, if you need to adjust left to right a little bit, you can't actually tap it side to side, even when it's seated within those brackets to get it centered up. So now if you're interested, we will move on to shortening up these blinds to fit this window a little bit better. The only two tools I'll use is micro side cutters and then my razor blade, which is a Milwaukee Fastback. As always, links in the description underneath the video if you guys need reference to the tools. So I open up the slats here and then just cut that front portion of each of the slats, both on the right hand side up to the desired level in the left hand side. I'm leaving a few extra slats just to have a little extra room so I'm not cutting it exactly to the window size. Then you're going to snap off the left and right hand side and pull out the middle section. Easy as that. So now I will use my razor blade and cut those middle string sections that were holding the slats and those are responsible for adjusting the angle of the slats. But now we don't have slats there so we don't need them. So you cut those middle section out and do not cut on the left and right hand side. There is a center string or cord that is the key part to what actually retracts the blind and that runs up to the head rail. Don't cut that. Those should be the only two things staying in place. And then I'll trim off with about two inches or three inches left of that string on the front and back and I'll show you why. So now there'll be plastic plugs on the left, right, and center, which we're going to need to remove. And we'll adjust that lower rail to a little more workable height. We're going to need to remove those plastic plugs so we can tuck in these extra pieces of string on the front and back. I'll show you a little bit closer view here to give you a better idea. So pulling that plug out, and that's that cord that goes up to the head rail that helps to retract the blind. I'm wrapping those extra pieces of string around that cord. And then once I get it around the cord just a couple times, I'm going to then push the plastic plug back into the lower rail. Then any excess string, just to clean it up, I use my micro side cutters and trim up the string. So now we have the length to where we want it for our window. Hopefully now your blinds are hanging up, looking great, and more importantly, functioning as expected. If you have any questions or maybe hit a little speed bump along the way, there's two places to go. Either right below the video in the comment section, you can let us know what you're facing and we'll jump in and help out. Or if you want a little bit more targeted feedback where you can share pictures and videos of what's going on, jump over to our Facebook group, which is Everyday Home Repairs Community, and then the community will jump in and help you get through any of those issues. Now down in the description, you'll see all the links to the tools, the parts, and the blinds that we talked about off Amazon that we recommend. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, don't forget to subscribe before taking off as we have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with repairs and improvements around your house. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.